helpmysquashgame.com. And you know, it's never been truer than now. Uh, but what goes around definitely comes around. And I have have all my life been a squash purist. In other words, I love squash. Um, and every time people have actually been playing racquetball, I've kind of tolerated it, but not thought of it as a serious game in the same way as squash. But now, now I can tell you, I'm looking at that game as being something that I could play and keep hitting balls for a long time in my life. And particularly with my sore knees, um, Racquetball is looking very, very good. But it's not the same racquetball as North American. It's racquetball played on a squash court. And I've got Fred Reed here, who's the national sales manager from Black Knight. And uh, Fred, I know you sell racquetball, uh, racquetball rackets and stuff. What do you think of this idea of us playing racquetball on the squash court? I'm, Barb, I'm excited. Uh, it's, uh, I've found a, uh, I found now a, uh, a sport that I can continue when my, uh, my knees are shot and my, and my back is gone. Uh, this sport will actually increase the longevity of, of squash court use in clubs. Uh, it's very easy to play and it's a lot of fun. Uh, I tried it uh, for the first time a couple of weeks ago. I uh, brought some squash players out and uh, we had a ball with it. It was, uh, and, and the, the learning curve to play it is really, really fast. And unlike North American racquetball, where as you got better, the rallies got shorter, with this game, it's like squash. As you get better, the rallies get longer. So it's, it's, uh, it's going to be something that you can get a good workout with, but not kill your body. And absolutely. And the, the one thing I did was... I thought, well, this sounds great. And I had gone to the, like you had, gone to the English website. And as you as you pointed out earlier, it was, um, they've actually amalgamated. The, yes. So the, the, the Squash Association and the Racquetball Association is amalgamated. So I thought, great. And I went and got myself a North American, a North American <laughs> hardball, uh, a, a, a racquetball. Yeah. yeah, and I went on the squash court with it thinking this was going to be wild. Wild? I couldn't control the ball at all. I mean, it was it first was first hit probably would have gone out, out of the court. Well, it would have done if I if I hadn't realized what I had, you know. So I know that you you've got a modification for the ball, right? Yeah, there's a ball. There's a there's a special ball uh, that's going to be played, and it's, and it's called it's a it's a racket ball, and, and racket ball. Uh, this sport it, it's it's spelled R A C K. E T B A L L, not R A C Q U E T B A L L. Uh, this ball is a lot mushier than a regular North American racket ball. Thank God. <laughs> uh, it's not going to. It won't. It will bounce. Yeah. Uh, but it's not going to bounce out of the court. Uh, it's a little bit heavier, um, and it plays uh, sort of in between a squash ball and a, and a North American racket ball. Wow. So what sort of racket am I going to use? The same sort of thing as before. That's that's the nice thing as well. You don't have to go out and purchase a, a, a special racket. Uh, you can use uh, the existing racquetball racket that is being used today in, in North America. Uh, it's a shorter racket than a squash racket. Uh, it's a little bit lighter. It has a string that you would put uh, through your uh, hand so that the racket doesn't fly off if you lose the... Uh, because the racket is so short, uh, you tend to uh, lose it sometimes. So having this drawstring will help uh, prevent the racket from flying out of your hands. But it's the same racket as a North American racquetball. Cool. And do uh, do people pl play with eye guards? Yes. I oh, would really? strongly recommend it. It's not just for the ball, but for the racket as well. Okay. So it's, uh, it'll give you good protection. Wow. So this is going to be fun. So we're it's going to be, it's gonna be we fun. Gonna... We're going to have a challenge. <laughs> I look forward to it. <laughs> but I, I want to practice a bit first. No way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Fred, thanks for coming down. Thanks for talking about our new sport. This is going to be going on f with us for the rest of our lives. We're right? going to have a lot of fun with this. Yeah, good. I, I think it's going to be one of those things that uh, really will be interesting. And I work with a, a, a group called CAUSE, which is the Canadian Association for Women in Sport, Active Women in Sport. And one of our mandates is to try and get the women between the ages of 55 and 70 mm -hmm. active. And to me, with this modified ball, I really see as this as a sport that women could do. That's perfect. It'll be easy for them to use. Yes. Uh, not only women, but men as well, and, yes. and kids. It's just a, it's a sport that you can pick up 
very quickly. Yeah. And uh, it gets gets everyone active. It's going to be a new toy. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, not a problem. Thanks, Fred. Thanks for coming down. And talking about getting getting people active in sport, one of the things that I'd like to mention today is how to get your kids involved. So many parents come to me and they always think that kids have to wait till there are six, eight, ten before they take squash lessons. And from my point of view, they should be hitting a ball when they're three and four. Now, that doesn't mean to say that you've got to get any expensive equipment. What I suggest you do is, if you're a squash player and you've got an old racket, do what I do. Take the racket, hacksaw the end off, Add a grip, now you've got a great little racket for a three or four year old. Truthfully, there are rackets on the market that you can buy. This one comes from Black Knight, and it's ideal for um, a four year old, five, six year old. Again, oops, the squash ball. I wouldn't use a black squash ball, use one of these foamy ones. The kids are never going to worry that if they, if they get hit with it or it, it, if they miss it, it's not going to hurt them. But they'll have a lot of fun. And you can go to a dollar store and buy these. Or you can go to a pro shop and buy the real ball that's been developed specifically to teach youngsters. Truthfully, there is a long-term athlete development program initiative going all the way through Canada. And the biggest thing that we know is if you do not give kids skills when they are young, they are not able to choose sports when they're older. So if they can't throw, if they can't catch, if they can't skip, if they can't run, um, you're excluding them from sports later on in their life. And from our point of view, sport is for life. So please get your kids out there. And they, they don't need to, to be hitting on a squash court. Let them hit on the garage door. You're not going to do any harm with this sort of foamy ball. Hi, so now let's go to... Uh, questions. And there's always, viewers, I encourage you to ask me any questions you like on any topic at all and I will try and answer them. Um, you can go to racketdrills.com or you can go to helpmysquashgame.com and just write your question into me. Uh, I have this one here from, from one of our viewers who says, when is a turning let appropriate or not? And let's be clear about what turning is. Turning is about taking a forehand on the backhand side of the court, or vice versa. So typically when you're doing that, your opponent has nowhere to go. So your opponent's not safe. So truthfully, I would say every time you turn on the ball, the potential is that you should ask for a let, and your opponent should run over and say thank you very much and give you a let. Now, there's one time when, and I know what you guys are like, the biggest thing that you want to remember is this is about the rules and the rule is about fair play and a fair outcome so if the ball rolls into the nick even though you've turned and even though your opponent could potentially be in the way because you can't hit the ball because it's unplayable you cannot ask for a let in that situation if a ball is a winner it's a winner whether you're turning whether you're not turning but fundamentally if you're looking to turn on the ball, and it often happens on the return of serve, on the backhand side of the court, my suggestion is, first of all, try not to do it. Secondly, if you have to, ask for a let, because it's a safety let. And if somebody's doing it continually to you, I would suggest two things. First of all, thank them for not hitting you. And secondly, change your serve, because typically it's the serve that's causing the problem. So lob serve rather than drive it, and you might find that up problem goes right out of the way. This is Barb Cooper from HelpYourSquashGame.com signing off. See you next time.